Hey guys, Tyler at No 40 Fly Shop in Coeur d'Alene. Today we are going to tie a fly that I designed here. Uh, we're going to call it Tyler's Crawdaddy. Um, we have a lot of killer uh, smallmouth, largemouth, and even on our trout streams um, locally here, the Coeur d'Alene, the St. Joe, the Clark Fork, Kootenai, uh, Spokane River. Uh, all of our rivers have uh, a lot in a healthy population of crayfish or crawdads. Um, so it's definitely a, a fly that you should have in your box, some sort of resemblance of a crawfish. Um, rubber-legged woolly bugger works. Um, I tie a fly I like uh, called the yuck bug. Um, this one's just a fancier version of a, of a crawfish and it's fun to tie. There's a lot of parts to it. Um, it looks cool. Um, this particular hook we're using here, uh, this is a gamagatsu. Um, this is a worm hook that the bass guys use and I like it because it's got a bigger gape a little bit stronger hook um, and it's going to hopefully give you a little bit better better hook set on on these fish you know if you're fishing along the bottom crawling it on the bottom maybe on a full sink line um, hopefully it doesn't get hung up as much as a traditional down down hook or down eye hook um, but uh, cool looking bug um, we're going to add some a pot this guy doesn't have it on here yet but uh, the fly we're going to tie here in a minute it's going to we're going to put some uh, two-part epoxy on the shell back here so cool looking bug got a lot going on um, so we'll get into it. Okay guys, here we go. First off, um, when you put your hook in here, we're just going to do it uh, standard like you would any other fly that you're going to do, but we're going to invert the hook uh, later in the pattern here. So start with the hook uh, like you normally would in any, any other fly. You want to come down further on the bend here, kind of over the top of the bend, kind of not on the flat part. I mean there really isn't a flat part on this hook, but a little bit more over the slope of the bend and that's your tie-in point to start. Next we're going to take our our dubbing, our orange dubbing, we're going to make a, a little bit of a ball back here and this is going to help separate our rabbit and give those claws uh, kind of the effect that we're looking for to kind of hold them apart. So get a good little ball started here. Okay, okay next I already got my rabbit strips prepped here um, let me tie them on. I'm going to tie them just right behind that ball of dubbing. And that's again going to help us uh, separate those claws, if you will. And just tie them on either side, just like so. Okay, cool. Okay, next we're going to take um, some of our this is brown, kind of a brown dyed grizzly or a whiting bugger pack and just take two of them. And these are going to be for uh, his antenna. You know, crayfish have a pretty defined antenna. So we're going to use these for that and we're going to strip them. Just take all the, all the hackle off. And what's cool about that, when that's all done, it gives a, a little bit of a barring um, you know their antenna in real life are pretty stiff. I've tied these uh, these flies with like a rubber leg. I don't think that really accurately represents their antenna. These guys are pretty pretty true to form. So and again, this this bug is more of a realistic looking fly. You know, and they're you know not saying it's any better or worse than like a impressionistic fly, but um, it's kind of what we're going for here. All right, so we got two prepped. And we're going to keep, keep them pretty long here, so we're going to tie in back a ways here. And again, right up to our claws. Go ahead and clip the tips off. There we go. Cool. Okay, next is going to be our flash. And it doesn't really matter what you guys use for your flash here. It's really up to you. Um, I've tied these bugs in a lot of different variations. I do a purple. Uh, I do a, obviously this guy's the orange one, kind of more your traditional look, and do a tan one. Um, so it's really up to you on the flash color, you know, if you guys want to match it up to the, the color theme, if you will, that you're doing, that's cool. Go for it. Okay, get our flash tied in. There we go. Okay, next is going to be our eyes, our dumbbell eyes, and we're using some pretty heavy duty aggressive eyes on this guy here get him tied in again we're gonna do a when you guys tie these in crisscross them that's gonna help lock them in 
You guys can super glue them too if you want. Um, just give them a little extra love. I'm going to put a little head cement here. That'll, that'll work too. Okay. okay. Next, we go back to our dubbing. This is going to fill in some of those thread wraps right behind the the hair here. Crisscross over the eyes a little bit more. Okay, looking good. Now we're going to flip them. And this is where it gets a little interesting. So now we're going to come back behind the eyes here again. So first things first. It's important when you guys the sequence and you tie this in. So next is going to be our 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 uh, body stretch material here, and this is going to go over the back to give it kind of that uh, shell back look here, if you can see that. And we're going to epoxy over this later. So go ahead and tie him in. Okay, next we're going to do our furry foam. And when you guys prep this here, give this just a little bit of a kind of an arrow point here. You can see that. And that just helps you give it a little tie in point here, just like that. That way it doesn't get too bulky back there. Okay, get him out of your way. Let's add a little bit more dubbing. Okay. Alright, now. It's time to move in front here of the eyes. We're going to come back. We're going to put our wire in first. Wire is important here. It's going to help hold everything together later. So I'm getting him tied in. Okay. Next is going to be our furry foam again. piece here. Okay, and I like to tie it in back here guys. It's going to give it some bulk. Give it, kind of proportionately make it look a little bit better. Okay. okay next is going to be our first set of rubber legs here. Just take one long guy, tie him on one side, pull it over to the other, and just fold it like so. It's a little tricky. Don't poke yourself on that. I do it all the time, but that hook's right there. He'll get you. Okay, next we're going to do our orange schloppen for the, for the hackle, for the body hackle, tying in at the tip, okay, just like you would a soft hackle, okay. Okay, now bring your thread just a little forwards here. That's all you got to do. And we're going to bring that furry foam, just one wrap. Go ahead and trap it. Okay, and this is where your next set of rubber legs is going to be at, guys. Same se sequence in tying this guy in. Just like that. That's all you got to do. Bring it forward a little bit more. And a wrap. Tie him off. Another rubber leg. Okay, next. Okay, there's your last wrap. So here is the trick. We're going to leave a tag of this furry foam back here. That's going to be his tail. Okay, we're going to leave that right like that. Cool. All right, tie him down nice and good. Okay, next we're going to collect that that last set of legs. And this is just temporary here, guys. This is a cool little trick to get your rubber legs out of your way here. Collect your next set, and I'm just doing one wrap. You don't want to wrap two or three times, and I'll show you why. 
Okay, we're going to bring our schloppen forward here. One wrap, two wrap, release. And that gets that legs right out of your way. Pretty cool little trick there. And go ahead and pick out some of your hackle. It's a really cool looking fly when it's all done. Okay, a lot going on here. And tie down good. And I'm going to kind of get these guys down, wet my fingers a little bit just to help get them out of my way. Okay, next is your furry foam over the back. You don't need to do too many wraps here. Trim. Okay, and then our body stretch. Trim. Okay, now our wire. So what I do here is get all of this separated. Kind of gently work those fibers apart with our schloppen. Kind of tricky, but just be patient. Almost there. Almost done. A little bit more dubbing. We'll finish it off. And I'm just going to put a touch of head cement there, and then we're going to get into the epoxying part here. Okay, next we're gonna do uh, two-part epoxy for the wink for the overback and a lot of guys are super into the new uh, Well, I shouldn't say it's new. It's been around a while, but UV glue on a large formatted fly like this I'm I, I'm not into it um, as far as the UV glue. I don't think it you know in larger quantities like that It doesn't seem to hold very well. So I, I still like kind of the old-school uh, um, Epoxy so two-ton this is clear. It also comes in yellow. You don't want the yellow uh, it's called DevCon, many different brand names out there, but uh, this is, I think, if I remember right, this is a five minute, um, comes in the syringe, squirt some in your little mixing cup, and you got to work quick. If it's five minutes, it's already setting up when that stuff starts to touch. Mix it really, really good. We go here so you got to kind of work quick here this stuff wants to sag you don't need a lot on here it'll kind of flow out so it's off off screen here but I already have a my little turning wheel going and I'm gonna set him in the turning wheel and he's done so typically what I like to do is I'll set up um, you know, I'm tying a batch of them, I'll tie five, six, seven, maybe a dozen and get enough epoxy ready to go, do them all in one batch. I think it's just as fast as the UV glue, especially on a larger formatted fly like that. Instead of having to sit there on each fly and dry the fly, you can get them all dressed out, put your glue on them, put them on the wheel, walk away, done deal. Um, and I think it's more durable on that type of uh, format or a bigger fly. So anyways. Um, that's my crawfish or my craw daddy, kind of cool looking bug. Um, this is the other one, we didn't put the epoxy on this guy, but uh, I like, you know, er, uh, springtime on uh, Hayden Lake or Coeur d'Alene Lake or any, you know, if you guys are Midwestern guys fishing smallmouth, put it on a full sink line, get it right on the bottom, 
strip it slow, strip it fast if you want to, but uh, this thing's wicked. Works really, really good. Um, give it a shot. Thanks.